Hi all, my name is Reese Eschman. So I am the author of the Home for Meow series. We have The Perfect Show, uh, Show and Tail, and Kitten Around, which just came out a few weeks ago. Um, so today I'm going to read a little bit from the first book in the series, which is called The Perfect Show. And then I will take a little time to talk to you about how I became an author and then take some questions if you have any. So be sure if you have questions to be thinking about what you wanna say now so that we can do some question time at the end. All right, so this is Home for Meow, The Perfect Show. Chapter one, cats and cake batter. I think this is my best idea yet. Pepper purrs. She leans over the side of the mixing bowl and sniffs the batter inside. Then she licks the tip of her heart-shaped nose. That's how I know this is a really good idea. I, Kira Parker, have a lot of ideas. Some of them are pretty good and some of them are really good. My little brother Ryan would probably tell you that my ideas are not so good, but I know he's going to love this one. After all, who doesn't love cupcakes and cats? Our family owns the perfect cup, the best and only cat cafe in town. We live right upstairs in an apartment with blue walls and yellow tiled floors. Mama runs the business and takes customers' orders. Dad bakes the treats we sell. And I get to spend all day with the best friends a girl could have, the cats. Pepper, our family's cat, rubs her gray and white fur against my arm. I know she's asking for a taste of the batter in my mixing bowl. This is for the customers, Pepper. I say, you know cats can't eat chocolate. Pepper wears a name tag that I made for her. It says, Kira's BFF for all nine lives. On the back, it has her name and mama's phone number. Making special name tags was a great idea I had in June, but now it's July and I have a new idea. The other cats who live in the cafe are from the local animal shelter. Customers come to the perfect cup for a mug of tea and a slice of dad's sweet potato pie. They stay because they fall in love with the cats. Sometimes they decide to adopt a cat and take it home. It's hard to say goodbye to my friends, but I know it's good for them to find their forever homes. Every time a cat gets adopted, Mama, Dad, Ryan, and I throw a party for the customers and give away free mini donuts. My new idea is going to get more people to adopt cats. I'm going to make a cupcake inspired by every cat living at the perfect cup. I'm working on the first cupcake recipe now. It's inspired by Tiger, a striped tabby cat. For this recipe, I need two types of batter. Tiger is sweet and round like an orange, so the first flavor is orange cream cake. Tiger can also act a little bitter when I wake her up from her naps. Dark chocolate is bitter too, so the second flavor is dark chocolate. I swirl the orange and chocolate batters together to make a cupcake striped like Tiger's fur. The swirl batter looks so pretty as I scoop it into the cupcake pan. Everyone will want to adopt her after they eat this, I say, but I wish you all could help me fill these pans. It's hard to scoop the batter without spilling. Tiger rolls onto her back and licks her paw. At least you know to wash your hands before you touch the food, I laugh. The kitchen is in a separate room behind the cafe. This oven is three times bigger than the regular one in our apartment upstairs. Dad lets me practice my baking down here as long as I don't turn on the oven without him around. I told him I need his help in a few minutes. I'm going to surprise him with my new idea. Just then, Tiger flops back over onto her belly. She sits up in front of the mixing bowl, leans her head back and lets out a huge sneeze. The sound startles Pepper, who leaps over the mixing bowl, only she doesn't quite make it over. Her back paws and her tail dip into the batter. Oh no. Oh no, I say, everyone calm down. I'm sure a tiger just had a tickle in her nose. No reason to panic, but it's too late. Max, a leopard spotted kitten who's always looking for trouble, jumps onto the counter. He pounces on a bottle of vanilla extract. Then he goes for the cake batter stuck to Pepper's tail. 
Max, no, I cry. I reach out for him, accidentally knocking over the mixing bowl. Now I have orange batter all over my apron. Uh-oh. I stick a finger in it to see if it at least tastes good. It does. Suddenly, the door to the kitchen swings open. Are you kidding me? Dad asks. Don't you mean, are you kidding me? I ask. Dad crosses his arms. Pepper gives me the side eye. I should have known a cat joke wouldn't get me out of this mess. Kira, what did I say about cats in the kitchen? He said, no unsupervised cats in the kitchen. Dad sighs. I said, no cats in the kitchen, period. I can't have cat hair getting into my homemade marshmallow fluff. I am sorry, I say, I'll help you clean up. I turn around to pick up the bottle of vanilla extract and accidentally knock over the baking powder. Dad's face crumples into a grumpy scowl. That's okay, Kira. Why don't you go help your mama out in the cafe? I scoop Tiger into my arms. Max leaps onto my shoulder. Come on, guys, I say. I'll have to come up with a new idea to help you get adopted. Chapter two, the King County Dog Show. The Perfect Cup is my favorite place in the whole world. There are rows of comfy green seats where customers sip tea while cats sit on their laps. In front of the big window looking out onto the street are baskets lined with soft blankets. My cat friends love to cuddle there when they're not chasing yarn balls. At the back of the cafe is the bakery case where dad stores all the sweets. It's right next to the register where mama takes customers' orders. But she's not standing there now. Max leaps off my shoulder and scratches at the glass covering the baking case. No, you can't have a kiwi tart, I say. I wonder what mama's doing at the front of the cafe. In fact, it seems like everyone in the cafe is standing near the front. My little brother, Ryan, has his nose pressed up against the window. His bright blue sneakers perfectly match the blue stripe running along the side of his pants. Mama, Dad, and I always wear clothes that can get dirty in the cafe, but Ryan never has a speck of cat hair on him. I look down at my dirty white sneakers. There's cake batter on them. Oh, well, I'll get Pepper to lick it off later. I walk up to Ryan. What are you all looking at? I ask. This corgi, he says. He's amazing. I look out the window and see a dog with a long round body and little legs. Tiger jumps out of my arms and curls up inside one of the baskets. She can't be bothered with dogs. What's so amazing about it? I ask. Just watch, says Ryan. The dog's owner points at the sky. The corgi leaps into the air. Then the owner turns in circles and her dog turns with her. It looks like they're dancing. Ryan laughs. Dogs are so cool, he says. They're way more fun than cats. I cross my arms. Take that back. You love cats. I do not, Ryan says. Then why are you holding two of them? Ryan looks down at the kittens sleeping in his arms. Nora and Zora are twins who just came to live at the perfect cup. Ryan hasn't let them out of his sight all week. Ryan pouts. I'm only holding them because they would cry if I did it. Whoa, what's she going to do with that? I look back at the corgi. Its owner pulls a jump rope out of her pocket. She and the corgi jump together. The rope sweeps beneath their feet. Everyone in the perfect cup cheers. The corgi and her owner torn toward the window. The owner bows, and then the corgi stands up on its hind legs and bows too. They turn and walk down the street. Near the door, Mama turns to her friend, Mrs. Patel. That was very impressive, Mama says. Mrs. Patel takes a sip of her tea. She comes to the perfect cup every day, but she always brings her tea from home and stands near the door. Apparently, she's allergic to cats. The corgi is supposed to take first place, Mrs. Patel says, but there's a rumor that a new St. Bernard might win. Win what? I ask. Mama looks at the batter splattered on my apron and my shoes. She raises an eyebrow, then goes back to talking to Mrs. Patel. That's weird. She didn't even ask how I got so messy. First place in what? I ask Mama again. The King County Dog Show. My human friend, Alex Patel, steps out from behind her mom. I smile when I see her. Alex is the best kind of human. 
She's always in a good mood. My cats love coming up to her because she never startles them like some people do. Alex wears jeweled cat eye glasses and a bracelet covered in green stones. Hey, Alex, I say, I didn't see you there. What's this dog show about? It's a competition to see which dog knows the best tricks. The best dogs from all over the county come to compete. They usually have it in the city, but this year they decided to have it here in Bloomington. It's on Saturday, but mom says it's going to be the talk of the town for months. Lots of reporters are coming. Alex's mom, Mrs. Patel, knows everything about our town. If she says it will be the talk of the town, she's probably right. I look down at Tiger snoozing in her basket. Aren't you excited, Alex says? You love animals. I love our cats. They're my friends. Who will adopt them if everyone is busy talking about dogs? Hmm, that's a good point, Alex says. Alex always tells me I have a good point when I share my thoughts. It lets me know she's listening. Well, what are you going to do, Alex asks. What do you mean? This seems like a time for one of your great ideas. Pepper meows at my feet. Her tail and paws are clean again. Looks like dad got all the batter off. I pick her up. She gently paws at the colorful beads that loop over my twists. I love it when she does that. Pepper is my best friend and the perfect cat. She's soft and sweet and super smart. Suddenly I get an idea. That corgi isn't the only one who's smart enough to know a few tricks. You're right, I say to Alex. I know how to get everyone to care about the cats again. Will you help me? Alex nods, a whisper in her ear. Then I run to grab a handful of kitty treats. Alex tugs on her mom's shirt and mom's shirt and asks her to get everyone's attention. Mrs. Patel's voice is deep and loud, and she never misses a chance to talk to everyone at once. Excuse me, she calls out. Every head in the cafe turns to look at her. I need everyone's attention, please. My daughter has something to say. Actually, Alex giggles nervously. She doesn't like getting lots of attention unless it's from the cats. My friend Kira has something to show you. I take a deep breath and set Pepper on the ground next to me. First, I let her sniff the treats in my hand. Then I cross to the other side of the cafe. Pepper and I have been best friends for three years. We've had a lot of time to learn tricks from each other. Pepper, come, I say. Pepper walks over to me, swishing her long tail. She's a lot more graceful than the corgi. I give her a treat. Pepper, sit pretty. She sits and turns her head to one side, letting everyone see her shiny fur and her beautiful golden eyes. I hear gasps from the customers and someone yells, aww. I smile, now for the grand finale. I crouch down in front of her and lift my hand. Pepper, I say, high five. She stares at my hand for several seconds like she's making up her mind. Then she lifts her paw and presses it gently against my palm. I knew she wouldn't let me down. The customers cheer, even mama looks impressed. I carry Pepper around and let the customers admire her. She's so beautiful, says a boy with a quiet voice. He smiles shyly. I didn't even know cats could be trained, the man next to him says. I'm Mr. Perez, and this is my son, Isaac. This is our first time at the cafe. We didn't realize the cats would be so talented. I know, I say, they're the best. And then I get the best idea ever. Getting a great idea is like making cupcakes. It starts with thoughts sitting in separate bowls, dogs, tricks, talk of the town. Then my thoughts mix together like flour, sugar, and eggs. I put the idea into my brain oven and it grows like scoops of cake batter puffing up into cupcakes. My cats are as talented as that corgi, maybe even more talented, and I'm going to prove it. My cats are going to win the King County Dog Show. <laughs> All right, thank you for listening as I read the opening of Home for Meow, the perfect show. Um, and you'll have to keep reading to find out what happens when Kira tries to enter her cats into the dog show. Uh, so all of the books in the Home for Meow series are about Kira and her family's cat cafe. And each one of them, she is 
coming up with a great idea or a few great ideas to help the cats get adopted. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. I am going to share my screen now so I can talk to you a little bit about how I became an author and how I wrote the Home for Meow books. Tommy, can you confirm that you're able to see the screen? Yep, everything looks good uh, on my end. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So we're going to talk about how I became an author. So a lot of people say that if you want to become a writer, you must do two things above all others, read a lot and write a lot. So I started writing when I was a kid um, in probably first grade, which is maybe how old some of you guys are. And this is a story here where I wrote the pineapple story when I was about seven years old. Um, which is a very silly story. So I wrote a lot of silly things. I wrote in my journal, I spied on my brother, but any kind of writing you do, that all counts as helping you on your journey if you wanna become an author or write more when you get older. But even though I loved stories and I really loved writing for a long time, I was afraid to write. I was embarrassed and thought people might not like my work. Then my brother shared a chapter of the book he wrote and I thought if he could do it, I could do it. So Kira and Ryan in the Home for Meow books have a little bit of sibling rivalry sometimes. And I had that too with my brother. So I wanted to be able to do everything that he could do. Uh, so I was shy like this cat. <laughs> and you can see a picture here of me as a kid looking a little bit shy, like don't take my picture. Um, but you know, with a lot of practice, you can become more confident and proud of your work. And so even though you might be shy or embarrassed, then with practice, I was able to share my writing and start to write more. So I was writing for a very long time. Back in 2014 was the first time I wrote a chapter of a novel. And it took me three more years after that to reach the end and finish a draft of a whole book. And then two more years after that is when I first sold my book to a publisher. So a publisher is like Scholastic, which is someone where you find an editor and another team of people that will help you turn your ideas and your book and all your notes into a real book cover that can be on shelves and in book fairs and libraries. And in 2022, my books are finally on sale in bookstores and in libraries for everyone to read. So it took me all the way from 2014 to 2022, um, from when I first started writing to when I actually had my book published. It takes a long time and you have to keep working at it. Um, I had over 40 rejections from agents and people who help you try to publish your book. And so when you're trying to achieve your dreams, a lot of people will tell you no, but you can't give up, you have to keep working hard and all it takes is one yes. And even if let's say maybe you don't wanna be an author, but you wanna be a doctor or a veterinarian or have your own cat cafe, sometimes along the way, it's gonna be hard and people are gonna tell you no, but you can keep going and keep trying if you want to achieve your dream. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I wrote Home from Meow. And I wonder what people think about why I wrote about cats. I like to ask people whether they think I'm a cat person or a dog person. So think about it in your head for a second. If I wrote all these books about cats, let's see if you think I have a dog or a cat in my house. And I am a dog person. I have one dog and his name is Johnny Dog. And these are all his friends at the bottom here. But so I have only ever had dogs and I had never had a cat before I started writing Home for Meow. So I had to do a lot of research to learn about cats. I watched cat videos. I talked to my friends who had cats. I went to meet their kittens and I snuggled with them. And I started to really, really love cats. And I knew that I wanted to write more about them because they're so cute and they're smart and they're fun and they do lots of weird stuff that's really cool. So in 
So I had to do a lot of research. So I will show you a little quick video about some of the research I did because I was writing about cat cafes. So I wanted to see what cat cafes that exist in the real world are actually like. So here's a quick video so you can see a real cat cafe. All right, so that is some of the research I did to learn about cats and how cat cafes are run. And so I'll tell you just a little bit about Home for Meow, the book was made. So after I wrote the book, I edited it and revised it. This and my editor helped me make changes to make it even more perfect. So in here, you can see that I was writing the story and then on the side, my editor makes notes telling me what changes I should make for the story. So for all of you kids in school, I know that when I was a kid, sometimes my teacher would tell me to work a little bit harder on this. She would give me suggestions and help about how I can make my work even better and learn a lot more about what I'm doing. And that still happens when you're an adult uh, because my editor helps me become a better author. And then we had to work on the illustrations in the book. So I, we had an illustrator named Wendy Tan um, who helped us make the drawings in the book. So first they gave her instructions about what the picture should look like. So it starts with words and then she would make a sketch to show us, okay, this is what I think it should look like. And then we give her notes and then she makes the final art, which looks like this. So this picture is from a scene in the book that I read two chapters of. So you'll have to keep reading if you want to know what happens and why those dogs and cats are running around together. And then the book was ready to print. And that's how we made Home from Meow. 